Well, you know, as far as mindset goes, I've already kind of talked about mindset for training. You know, I believe there's uh, the right mindset for training and learning and getting better. And then, you know, your mindset and competition is another thing. Um, that's something that I really had to work on a lot myself uh, because, you know, as I said, I was very much by myself. And so, you know, I didn't have someone kind of giving me the confidence um, that I needed coming up, like, to really tell me what I should think and feel for a competition. Um, I was kind of like just going in and figuring out on my own. Um, and I still had a lot of competition success coming up, but then Brown, you know, it was, it was a little harder. I'm, I'm at a level competing against guys that, you know, I didn't even have brown belts to train with at, my, at home. So competing against brown belts, guys that started to have a, more of a name, um, in the beginning was hard for me. Um, and, uh, you know, transitioning into black belt, that was around the time that I was training, started training a lot with, with Solo and Shanji. And, you know, Solo really opened my eyes to the mental game. He would talk to me about it and tell me how I should think, how I should feel, you know, taught me how to be confident. Um, and then I would get, to, you know, I would hear what he would tell me and soak that up. And then I would, I learned a lot from watching Shanji compete, you know, because we competed a lot together. And, uh, and kind of just seeing how he carried himself, his his attitude, his swagger, you know, how he, he moved and, and how he looked and uh, just everything about the way he competed um, was a big learning thing for me. Um, and so I, I learned a lot from watching Shanji and just talking with Solo. Um, but uh, in the end, what I, what I learned, what I figured out is that it's all about confidence. It's all about confidence. You know, you're only as strong as your only self-confidence. So if you have any doubt, if you think that there's any way that something could go wrong, it, it's very likely it will play out that way. Um, a lot of times people can doubt themselves or they overestimate the other person. They give the other guy too much props. You know, they see him triangle everybody and say, oh my God, this guy has the best triangle I've ever seen. You know, and then already you're putting that out there that, um, that, you know, they have something so amazing that maybe you can't stop, you know, um, or they have the impassable guard, you know, and you, you think about that. Or a lot of times people say things to themselves like, you know, they reach the semifinals and they're like, well, at least I know I'm going to get a medal, you know, or, um, you know, they put so much pressure on themselves, maybe they're in a big division, they say, oh, I, gotta, I have to win six matches, six matches, there's a hundred guys in my division, and it's like, they're uh, overestimating the competition and underestimating themselves, you know? Um, and so, I had that problem, you know, of where I would say certain things to myself that maybe I didn't, couldn't realize were just straight up negative, but maybe they weren't even straight up negative, but somehow, they were downplaying my abilities and, um, you know, giving the other person too much props. Um, and so, you know, going into the black belt divisions and starting to compete against the guys that I'd watched and studied and put that kind of mystique around after living in Oklahoma and not having that access to them and only getting to see them in Brazil once a year and all that sort of stuff. And next thing you know, I'm competing against them. You know, it was, it was hard. It was very hard. And, um, Fortunately, you know, Salo and Shanji, they gave me a lot of confidence. I knew that training with them, I'm training with the best in the world, and nothing could be more difficult than, you know, going back to back, Salo and Shanji for hours, like what we used to do back in the day, you know, just super hard training. And, uh, and so I had some tough losses, but then I started to win, and I started to gain more confidence. Maybe it could be rocky, maybe I'd have, confidence against certain guys and then match up against another guy and not do as good as what I could, but it was all learning and I was learning and growing and, and my confidence kept building and 
I started to find my place in the black belt division. And it took me a few years before I, everything really clicked. Um, and then, you know, my first year was 2005. And then into 2007, I had the most amazing year ever. And I ended up winning, you know, the, all the major tournaments. And I didn't even really believe that I could happen. You know, my goal was to, to win them all. I said, I'm going to do them all, mainly for experience. And I wanted to go against the best guys as often as, as I could to get to that level. And I won the Europeans, gave me a little more confidence for the Pan Ams. And I won that, it gave me a little more confidence for Brazil. And then after I won the Brazilian Nationals, I was like, man, I can really win the Worlds. You know, I can do this. And, and then it happened, you know. Um, so I think it's about getting the confidence. You know, obviously the training needs to be there. You have to do the sacrifice. You got to be in shape, you know. All of that are important pieces to make you mentally as strong as you possibly can. But it's possible to have all those things and still be mentally weak and go out there and just totally fumble, you know. So if anything is the most important, it's definitely the mental game. But the other things are important pieces to make you strong mentally. But, uh, you know, I started to just get to understanding how to kind of duplicate the way I felt on my best days and try to make that happen again. Um, and I have certain things I would say to myself, just like auto suggestions to really keep me in a good positive place so I could block out the negative stuff and be very like, you know, positive and confident, believe in myself. Um, so that's a big thing, like reading positive things and um, shutting out the negative um, and really just uh, finding myself as well. You know, I, I think if you compete, and you don't know what sort of person you want to be as a competitor, what sort of character that you want to represent, you know, whether you're a grinder or you're, you know, a really like someone that moves a lot, is agile, or someone that has a, a dangerous guard, or, you know, you got to kind of know what you want to represent out there, you know, like. Muhammad Ali, Jordan, you know, all these people, Mike Tyson, whatever, they all had a, a persona, you know, a, an image that they represented as a competitor, you know, and it played out into their style, you know, Muhammad Ali dancing, moving, the talking, the kind of the showboating, but that was his style, got in your head, you know. If you watched some of Muhammad Ali's memorable fights and it was whited out, to where he was just a white image and you couldn't see his face or anything. You just saw an image, but you saw the way it was moving. I bet you could figure out that was Muhammad Ali. You know, you saw that for Mike Tyson, you could figure it out. You saw that for Jordan, you could figure it out. And so that was the other thing is like understanding how I wanted to move, how, what I wanted to look like, what intensity I wanted to bring, what I wanted to be known for as a competitor um, you know, it, it's kind of like your superhuman version of yourself, you know? And so when you understand that as well, that gives you that inspiration of knowing what you want to achieve out there, you know? Um, cause at the end of the day, if you're just competing for medals, it's not enough, you know? Um, I think you have to have a deeper, uh, you know, motivation, something that really inspires you that deep understanding of what you're trying to represent and that is something that's very important when things get rough and tough out there you know that is something that you can get that last bit of fire that you need you know it's not going to be the metal it's going to be what mark that you want to leave in competition because like I said you could have everything else but if mentally you're off it doesn't matter how good your technique is how good of shape you're in you know you could be as ready as ever as far as those things go. But if you're doubting yourself and you don't really want to be there and you don't have that inspiration, if you're not inspired, the guy that is inspired may not be half as good as you technically, you know, or even as good a shape as you. But if he knows that he wants this more than anything and he believes in it and you're kind of eh, so-so, he's going to take over. You know, when things get rough, he's going to take over. And so I believe it's everything, pretty much, you know, especially for me, you know. Um, and it allows you to be at your best, you know. So you could be at your best and still lose. That happens, you know. But um, 
the worst thing is to lose and know that mentally I didn't really want it or I was a little off. I wasn't confident enough. I didn't believe in my positions enough and I hesitated, you know, and, uh, and that's the worst way to lose. And I've experienced that before and I, and you know, you never want to feel that way. You know, um, if I make a mistake, technically you can learn from that. But if you make a mistake because mentally you just weren't there, that's like, man, I know better than that. You know what I mean? So I think it's everything. I mean, it's hard to say a percentage. I think it's everything. You can maybe even not be as good as your opponent or maybe not be in as good a shape. But if you're mentally in the best place ever, you can do amazing things, you know? And so that is what makes it so important, you know? Probably the one thing that helped, I mean, Sensei Solo was definitely uh, a huge factor as far as that stuff goes for me. I mean, he really helped me understand what it meant to be a champion, you know, because I didn't understand all that, you know. Um, I knew I wanted to be a champion, but I didn't know what that meant, you know. Um, so he helped me so much. Um, but if I had to say one book or one resource that helped me identify what it means to believe in, a, in accomplishing your goals, it would be Think and Grow Rich um, from Napoleon Hill. Um, I have a quote from Napoleon Hill uh, that's on one of my t-shirts. I use it inside my Lucky Geese. You know, it's in there all the time. Um, it's, the quote is, victory is always possible for the person who refuses to stop fighting. That was something that I realized was something that I wanted to represent as my character as a competitor, someone that never quit, you know, because I feel like that was a representation of my journey, being from Oklahoma and having all these obstacles to overcome, you know, it was about not quitting, you know, and just continuing, and, and so uh, that's why that quote means so much to me, but that book was, like, amazing for me when I, when I found it, it was 2007, actually after I won um, the Worlds, I read that book. Um, and it really put together everything that I'd already kind of learned and been doing, some naturally, some I didn't know about at all, and I could really put it together, and then I was able to feel like I had a much better understanding of the mental game, but I learned about auto-suggestions in that book, um, and just, it's just so motivating, a lot of things that really help keep my mind in the right place, because you have to do the mental training every day. You know, what are you saying to yourself in your workouts? What are you saying to yourself inside your training? You know, do you get your guard passed in training and fall apart? You know, do you kind of quit on yourself in training? And so you have to analyze what's in your mind at all, the at all times because just like you can't train a couple times a month and then go into a competition, it's not enough. I can't ignore the mental game and then just work on it the day of the tournament or the week of the tournament and hope and think that I'm gonna be ready to go. It's something that you have to work on every day and that's what I learned from that book. What are you telling yourself every day? What visualization are you doing, meditation? What positive quotes and things are running through your mind? You know, is the more positive you can be in your mind about everything, the easier it is to be confident and believe that you're gonna achieve um, everything you set your mind to. And even if you don't achieve it, at that moment when you thought you were, it helps you regroup and come back and say, well, that didn't happen so I can learn this and then I can be stronger for the next thing or be more, more, even more motivated for the next thing. And it helps you just keep going and never stopping, you know? Um, but that book was huge for me. There's a lot of other great books out there, but you know, and this is something that everyone's gonna be different. So it's a personal journey. And what you say to yourself to help you be at your best might be different than what I say to myself. You know, you might need to pump yourself up more than I need to pump myself up. Maybe the other person is a, someone that needs to calm down, you know, and you're one that needs to pump up. You know, it's all about finding your place where you're at your best, but everyone's going to be different. So it's a very personal journey. So I recommend just getting as much information as you can and figuring out what works best for you. So yeah, once again, Rafael Lovato Jr. Happy I got to talk to the guys from BJ Library. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the interview. And if uh, you're interested in in uh, you know learning from me or getting in touch with me first, follow me on on my social media, my Facebook fan page. Um, anyone that's interested in the seminar, you can contact me through there. Um, send me a message. 
Um, you know, I'm on Instagram at Lovato Junior BJJ. Um, my website's lovatojr.com. Um, all those different ways you can get in touch with me. Um, uh, LovatoBJJVideos.com if you're interested in seeing my DVDs or information about my online coaching site um, where I have all my techniques and uh, a lot of mental training stuff, competition breakdowns, I do monthly webinars, so much stuff for my site. Um, and uh, let's see, if anyone comes through Oklahoma and they want to stop by my academy and train, cool. they can find information on my school at OKBJJ.com. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that's about it. I'm available for seminars worldwide and I'm out there competing, doing my thing all the time. So I like to hear from my fans and, and uh, you know, love to, to hear, you know, anyone that um, wants to reach out to me and, and uh, if they want to learn from me or just talk to me or anything, um, they can contact me pretty much through my social media, my Facebook. Thank you.